have them staggered different size. You don't want them all to be like the same length at the top um, because you want it to look more natural and like they've been melting for a while or burning for a while. So the next piece that I'm going to cut, I'm going to um, kind of measure off of this one. And as you're going through cutting it, just slowly rotate it because you want to make sure that your blade, you know, kind of stays in the same spot. With these, you can do as many as you want. I did four. Um, again, the whole point is also just to make sure that they are um, different heights. Um, it gives it a more natural appearance. Okay, so what we're going to do is remove the writing. There we go. So take your phenol polish remover. And I don't want to waste it, so I'm just going to pour a little bit in the cap. And basically drench my Brillo pad. You see how... Look at it, it's already coming off. So just take your Brillo pad and just scrape it off. Here, I'll move that back out the way. Okay, so I have completely removed all the ink off of the couple um, that had the ink on there and my geese are gonna keep talking over me um, so and then I went ahead and rinsed them off I just used some water you know to kind of completely clear I mean you see there's still like a little bit of residue which it's fine because we are going to spray paint them but not until we actually put um, basically, you know, where it's going to look like wax has been melting for a while, like they've been burning for quite some time. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do is just that. We're going to add hot glue to make the wax droplets, I guess, or wax melting down the sides of them on all of them. So, Okay, so now that those are glued together, um, also you want to make sure since this is the front part, um, you can, I didn't put glue in these cracks because you don't want to see the glue, you know, frontwards, but I did go ahead and put extra glue on the back just for extra support. Um, so now the next step is to add the melting wax. So basically this step is pretty simple you're just going to put your glue gun right here and just push and just let it drip down but always make sure to go ahead and coat the top really well and just let it slowly fall down and whenever it gets like this stringy just make sure you take you know go ahead and pull that off because wax is not stringy so um, those will come off later okay so now that I have finally finished and doing all of the melting um, this is what it looks like um, definitely you want to make sure that you don't really have a pattern going on per se because then it'll just look too fake um, and I did do a couple of different layers in some sections just to make it look like the, you know, the candle has been melting for quite some time. Um, also, with the top, you want to make sure you put glue around all the, um, the whole tops of both of them. Now, I didn't do the backs. I mean, I went down a little bit on the backs, but since they're going to be facing a wall, um, I figured, one, I didn't have enough glue for the backs. And two, no one's going to see the backs anyway, so... Um okay, so I have just finished spray painting the fake candles. And the spray paint definitely um, makes it look more realistic. The spray paint that I used, it's interior exterior. It is a matte, or a flat 
um, white. The reason why flat and not satin or gloss is because with the flats, if because I am going to be um, putting a little bit more like color detail in the melting part, um, and if I use gloss or satin, the um, the paint that I'm going to use it wouldn't stick to it very well and it just kind of trickle right off. So I'm gonna continue to let this dry, and um, then the next step is uh, doing some detail work within the melted wax part. Okay, so far I have painted these first two. Um, just because I wanted to make sure that it was going to look the way I wanted with the color and everything that I chose. The paint that I used is a 676 uh, like metallic Inca gold uh, from Walmart. And they're like 97 cent. And then um, just a drop of any type of black acrylic paint. Um, gonna need a paintbrush. Um, I use, I'm using this one because it does a little bit better at detail. Uh, it's not too big and you know it's pretty flat. Also I just have like a little container where I mix my paint. So this is the color that I got from basically making about a um, half dollar size of the gold and then literally just one drop of the black. Um, you don't need too much. Um, like I said, I've already painted two, so. And if you mess up, just get some white. It's just nice to have on hand. Um, I did mess up at one point. You can probably tell, like, in here a little bit, I had to end up putting some white just because it kind of went everywhere when I was first doing it, so. Um, but overall, so far, I'm really happy with these two, so. What I'm going to do is start, I'm going to kind of show you how I go about painting the next two. And you're just going to dab a little on your brush, not too much, because um, you don't want to have too much product on your brush. So and then you're just going to go along and everywhere, basically you're making shadows. So just kind of go in and wiggle it around the sides, the more feathering I think you do, the more realistic it looks, especially in like these dark areas, um, like back here, you want to make them look dark, so, because they are shadowed more, and I mean, that's really about it, I mean, it's just going to take some time, it doesn't have to be perfect, I mean, mine definitely are not perfect at all. Just make sure that you don't forget about the top. Um, just add in little texture. Like again, anywhere where there's like a little little hump or lumpy, a humpy lumpy. <laughs> just add some color to there. And also when there's just a little bit on the brush, just kind of run it over some of these other indentions that the um, hot glue had made. Now that you have completed painting the entire melted candles, fake melted candles, um, the next step that we're going to do is um, I just happen to have like this extra styrofoam hanging around. I mean, I had to go and like kind of cut it into a circular form. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, at the bottom, since the top is kind of already coated with the melted glue, um, it's going to be harder to try and push it in from the top. So what I'm going to do is push these in through the bottom with the help of my, this thing. So, um, and this is to, um, for you to sit the candles on um, because if you just try and like push them or put the candles in all right okay. 
Now that all four are in the bottom, and I'm just gonna take something that's not gonna just poke straight through the styrofoam. Um, just a little tool thing, little pliers. Okay, so actually I'll probably keep it like this. So this one is a Gerber. It doesn't really matter what you have, but I'm just gonna kind of push further down. Okay, and then just put your finger at the bottom until it feels like it's at a good spot. That feels good. Now you can see they're not all the way up because, I mean, you want it to look realistic and normally, like, when you melt candles, the wick doesn't stay at the top anyway. So, um, you know, you can kind of have them however far up or far down you want. Um, basically, I'll probably, I might end up adjusting them once I put my tea candles in. And you see how they fit in there, like, pretty snug, so... You don't want to have any smaller than a two inch PVC pipe or else they will not fit. And I like the how far they are down, can't really see them. Okay, so I just went ahead and lit the candles. Um, it definitely looks pretty awesome. So yeah, that's the project. So hopefully everyone enjoyed watching this tutorial. And if you really like it and want to continue seeing some cool things like this, then you can subscribe to my channel and see future videos. Yay! Okay, thanks guys.